On November 11th, 2012, I was a 19-year-old driving to my grandmother's house for Sunday dinner. You know, big mama's house. <laughs> so my grandma's house is where my family get together. We watch football games, movies, and we have amazing dinner. My favorite thing to eat at my grandma's house is her baked chicken. <laughs> Uh, she cooks like beef and pork, but I don't eat that, so she always has a special pan for me and my mom of this amazing baked chicken. Unfortunately, on that Sunday evening, I never made it. I was pulled over by a police officer. I was interrogated on the side of a road. I was cursed at, I was threatened, even after I provided my driver's license, registration, and car insurance. These officers terrorized me on the side of this dark road for over 20 minutes, all the way up until they went hands on. They attempted to pull me out of the vehicle. I panicked and drove off. I had no idea that one of the officers jumped inside my vehicle until he started shooting. When the first shot went off, I thought I was being tased. When the second shot went off, I could smell the gunpowder and the burning sensations in my chest. When the third shot went off, I thought I was going to die. The fourth shot went off, and I thought about my family and how badly I wanted to be with them and tell them that I loved them. The fifth shot went off, and I knew my life would never be the same. See, after being shot, my life changed forever. And I had to make a decision to either respond with negativity, to be consumed by all of this hatred, or to adopt the words of Michelle Obama, when they go low, we go high. I decided to go high. Some may ask, what does the high road look like? Well, if you've seen my story in the media over the past few years, you've probably seen me smiling in almost every news article. However, behind the scenes, in my real life, I've struggled with depression. I've struggled with anger. I've struggled with forgiveness. A lot of people ask me if I forgave the officers who shot me. And I say it depends on which day you ask me. So how do I move forward with my life after being unjustly shot? Well, I had to adopt three principles, love, compassion, and understanding. And so in my situation, it was hard to start with love, because how could I love these people who caused me and my family so much pain? So I decided to start with understanding. <laughs> and so the first step I took to understand these police officers and the system um, was encouraged by one of my professors, Dr. Conti. 
And I heard him laugh. <laughs> and so he gave me the opportunity to take a class at Duquesne University called Police and Society. I had no full understanding of how policing worked. I just knew I was harassed for the majority of my life. Um, and my friends were too. I had no understanding of politics and how politics work. And so I decided to take this class to learn. And when I took this class, I learned the, the perspective of not only police officers, but of a lot of my white counterparts. Uh, my classmates had very different perspectives of policing and society. And we learned together. And so I learned things about policing and about society that made me look at racism different. It made me look at society different. It made me want to add value to society. That's where the compassion kicks in. So in learning how society was screwed up, I grew a heart for even the people in the system that caused me so much pain. And as a human being, as a, as a leader, of course, I'm challenged. Sometimes people ask me if I want to work with police officers, and I'm like, not today. I don't want to see a police officer. <laughs> Other times, you know, I'm running straight toward the people who hurt me with love. And I'm asking them questions about their personal lives and trying to help society heal. I'm currently encouraging young people who don't believe in the system to engage the system. See, I believe that we cannot change the system if we opt out. One of the things that I noticed with a lot of millennials is that we screenshot and we share these stories on social media. And yes, a lot of people are aware but how much awareness do we need? Real change comes from doing something, having a voice at the table, being civically engaged. There's three areas where I see that we can have a voice at the table and change society. It's education, and I'm a mentor. I, I work within the schools public schools, private schools, charter schools, and I also work closely with universities. Government, well, through working with universities, I have the privilege with, uh, of working with lo local governments um, and business. So I, I now am, I'm an entrepreneur in residence for a company in the Silicon Valley, and I'm learning about business and how to be a social innovator. You see, for the majority of my life, I didn't have access. Now, how I responded to adversity has given me access and the opportunity to evoke and change lives all over the world. And so a lot of people ask me, what can I do? How can I be involved? It's simple. Lead with love, compassion, and understanding. Pay it forward. Be involved. Have conversations with even those individuals or systems that have caused you pain. Because I know personally that you can always make your pain purposeful. Thank you.